<clears throat> well, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers, mothers-to-be. <laughs> and um, so I just want to share just again from my heart, um, and it will be short and sweet, hopefully, the sweet part. It will definitely be short. <laughs> Um, in February of this year, I went to Dallas, Texas, to spend the weekend with three other ladies that I had met during our time in language school in France back in 2003. Um, for those of you who are new or don't know, Jeff and I were missionaries in Africa, and before going to Africa, we had to learn French, and so we spent a year and a half in France. And we went to a school where um, it was mostly all Americans came to, and they were all, most of them missionaries, um, who were, they were going to be working in French-speaking countries. So we lived together, we went to school together, um, very close-knit community. One of the ladies that I saw in Dallas was a very close friend, and one I've intentionally kept up with, communicating with her. Another one I was very close to when we were in France, but besides for Facebook, I didn't keep in touch with her personally. And then the last lady I did not know at all, <laughs> but she was friends with the other two ladies. So we decide to do this thing where we get together and we spend a few days together in Dallas. It was a, a common meeting ground. None of us live there, but this is where we were coming to. And I remember before going how nervous I was because I hadn't seen any of them. Although I had kept in touch with the one, I hadn't seen any of them for several years. And you know, you always wonder, is it gonna be the same? How will things be? Will you feel that connection that we had in France? That was a very unique time. And like I said, um, we lived closely together, so we were almost made to, to be um, close to one another. So I was wondering all these things. I also wondered how much would we share? Would we feel comfortable sharing all four of us together? Um, how deep would it go? Things like this. By brunch, the morning after we, we all got together, we had all laughed, we had all cried, we had all gotten angry, and we had all shared something just in a matter of 24 hours. That weekend for me was kind of like a spiritual retreat. God used those three ladies to encourage me in um, so many different ways. None of us knew what the other was going through, and some of the, these ladies were struggling with huge issues. But then we shared, we became more and more comfortable together, and the strength and the spiritual counsel and prayer that went on that weekend blessed me tremendously. It, it was during that weekend that a story was shared, and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. It just made an impact on me, and I thought from that moment I heard it, I wanna do this for Mother's Day, I wanna do it for our retreat, I wanna like just expand on this story, it's such a great story, so I'm going to share with you, and hopefully it will impact you in the same way. Between the story and the weekend, I began to think a lot about friendships and the bond that women have together. And I knew it was something I wanted to save and share for today. Now men, I'm gonna apologize just a little bit because um, I feel like other Mother's Days when I've spoken, there's been things that you can still glean from. <laughs> I'm hoping today you do too, but I feel like for whatever reason today is really geared towards women. So men, I apologize, but You'll still be encouraged, I hope. That's my prayer. <laughs> well, if you know me at all, you know that I am a very strong component of relationship. I believe it's important and I believe it's necessary. I seek out and I make it priority to spend time with my friends and those close to me. However, first and most important of all should be our relationship with Jesus Christ. He should be the center. Our friends, our family, and our spouse should never take his place in our lives. And I know it's very easy. It's something I'm still learning. It's so easy to go to a friend first than to take your issue or your situation to God first. So I'm still learning that, but he's always there. He's always listening. So I want him to be that person that I go to first. But however, he gave us relationships and I believe that we can lean on those relationships in difficulty. 
a, a lot of people say, well, um, God first, then my spouse, then my kids. And I, I don't like to think of it necessarily first, second, or third place. I like to think of it, God is in the center of it all. And he's a part of it all. He's <clears throat> a part of my relationship with my spouse, a part of my relationship with my friends, the center with my kids. He's, a, he's the center. As women, I believe we need each other. We need to take time to invest in one another. Sometimes women shy away from other women because what do we do, ladies? We tend to compare ourselves. We look at someone else. We say, oh, they, they have this. I don't, or, you know, I don't. They are not going to want anything I have to offer, that type of thing, or jealousy, things like that come into play. It happened with me. Um, with one of the very ladies that I met in Dallas. Her name was Connie. And I remember our time in France, we were very close with Connie and her husband Chris and their kids. Our, they had boys, three boys, our boys age, and so we really connected with this family. And Connie was very, um, and plus this probably, I can probably also blame this on my age and immaturity at the time, I hope. <laughs> but um, Connie was very outgoing. She was loved by everybody. Um, she, yeah, she, that's all I can explain it. Um, Jeff and her would banter and go back and forth and I just would kind of be sitting there. And so I started to get these, started to get these feelings a little bit of jealousy, you know? Here she is, she can joke, she can laugh, she's the funny one, she's the outgoing one, she comes into a room and, and here I am and I don't have any of that stuff because I'm the quiet one. And I started to let those feelings get in my way of my friendship with her. And finally had this time with God and, and looking to him and seeking him out um, and just asking God to help me with this problem. And finally, I actually even met with her and sat down with her and, and not in great detail, but was just very vulnerable with her and just let her know I, I was experiencing these things and it was my affecting my relationship with her. And unfortunately, I even think it it messed up the rest of our time there in France with this family. Now, thankfully, um, that is all in the past, and now I've established a new relationship with her, and a very good one, and we plan on seeing them hopefully soon. But anyway, so these type of things, you can let them get away, in the way of what could be a really good relationship for you. We each have something beautiful to add to relationship. I know that when I need advice, I know which friend to go to. I know who I can go to when I just need to let off some steam. I know who I can talk to about my kids. I know who I can talk to about my spouse. <laughs> I know who I can talk to about my job or even who I can talk to about Freedom Life Center and the things that go on here. And yet at the same time, I know that I have things to offer to relationship as well. And I hope each one of you see your potential and what you have to offer to, to be in that relationship. I know a lot of people say about me, and it's okay because I'm good with it now, that I am quiet and I'm a good listener. And that's okay because you need those type of friends, right? You need someone sometimes just to listen to you. And maybe you don't need them to say anything at all. So that's one of my gifts that I have and that I can bring to relationship. You all have unique qualities, each and every one of you, that are just waiting to be discovered and seen by other women if they haven't already. You have something that they need. Remember that when your mind tends to lead you down the path to compare and get jealous, that you have something to offer. Okay, so now my story. And there's, um, and I'll kind of cue the pictures, if you don't mind, Amy, of, of what I have back there. Okay, I think this story appealed to me as well because it's, you tend to think of elephants being in Africa, so of course my heart, um, because we lived in Africa and we did see elephants, but we had to go on a safari to see them. Unfortunately, we didn't live where they were just wandering about. <laughs> so when a mama elephant is giving birth in the wild, all the other female elephants in the herd back around her in formation. And I do have a picture of that. 
Isn't that beautiful? They, they come together in formation. They close ranks so that the delivering mama cannot even be seen in the middle. They stomp and they kick up dirt and soil to throw the attackers or any you know foreseen attackers off the scent. And they basically act like a pack of fierce bodyguards. They surround the mom and the incoming baby in protection, sending a clear signal to the predators that if they want to attack their friend while she's vulnerable, they'll have to get through 40 tons of female aggression first. <laughs> oh. When the baby elephant is delivered, and I think this actually might be the picture of it a little bit, the sister elephants tend to do two things. One right here, you see the, the sand and the dirt being kicked up. This is when they, they do it the second time. And what they're doing is they're protecting the newborn. They're protecting its fragile skin from the sun. And then, in the next picture I have that, the second thing they do is they all start trumpeting. trumpeting. <laughs> A female celebration of new life, of sisterhood, of something beautiful being born in a harsh, wild world, despite enemies and attackers and predators and odds. So now let's bring it to us as humans, as females, as women. When our sisters are vulnerable, when they're giving birth to new, not just new life, but new life to new ideas, maybe to a new ministry, to a new space, to a new job, when they are under attack, when they need their people to surround them so that they can create, deliver, heal, recover, we get in formation. We close ranks and we have each other's backs. We do the heavy lifting while our sister is down. We say, you want to mess with this girl? Come through us first and good luck. <laughs> I have to s share just a quick story. <clears throat> Um, this past year, this past, I'm sorry, this past year, I went through a difficult time. And it wasn't easy. And I remember hearing about, and she probably doesn't even realize the impact that she made on me. But he, when this lady heard the situation that I was going through, she became like a mama bear. It's Sherry Norton. You don't even know. But she would be like, no one's getting through Jeff and Michelle. No one's gonna hurt them. And she stood, she stood firm and she was my, my cheerleader, my, I don't know, all I can, I can say is my, my mama bear because I felt like she had our backs. Not that anyone else didn't, but I'm just thinking of you and specifically Sherry and how you just encouraged and you were ready to do whatever for me and Jeff and I appreciate that about you. And so thank you for doing that for me this last year. When delivery comes and when new life makes its entrance, when healing begins, the dark has passed and now our girl is ready to rise back up. So you know what we do? We sound the trumpet. We celebrate because we saw it through together. We celebrate, we cheer, and my favorite part, we raise our glasses. <laughs> And we give thanks because we've made it through. I kind of feel like in this last year, this is where I'm at now. And many of you are celebrating with me because you know. And so we celebrate, we give thanks. You know, sometimes we are the one that's in the middle going through the difficulty. But sometimes we're on the, we are the one on the outer circle. We take turns being weak and we take turns being strong. And like our elephant sisters, we don't forget. We remember God's faithfulness and how Jesus showed us to live and to love. <clears throat> and we remember what Jesus brought us through. 
We remember when and who surrounded us when we were down. We remember our courage, our strength, and our ability to bring new life. We remember the women who have gone before us today and specifically, I always, you know me, I always think of my mom on today and, and you all know she, she passed away at an early age um, because of cancer, but my mom was a very strong lady. And I rem so I tend to remember those type of qualities from her. I take after my mom in that I'm, I'm quiet like her. Um, but she had a strength, and even through all of her treatments and things like that, she stayed strong. I even think, I was thinking with maybe the elephants, the Africa thing. My mom, um, it was a surprise. They were not expecting it. But when, so my parents were missionaries, and we lived in Europe to learn French and then went to Africa. And it was while we were learning in our language school that my mom got pregnant and it was not expected. I was 14 years old, so this was going to be my little brother. And um, so, and on, on top of it all, she was gonna to have to deliver in Africa and not knowing anything about what she was going into. I, I just can't imagine. Angie, can you imagine right now thinking of giving birth to that little baby in Africa? And so here we go, and we're already in a remote little town in Africa, and she goes to the village where she's going to be delivering. And this midwife walks her through the village hospital saying, this, well, this is where you're gonna give birth. And while she's walking my mom through the hospital, she also has her German Shepherd dog. And my mom, who is not a pet person, was like, I can't believe she's walking her dog and we're going through this hospital. <laughs> and of course, and it's, if, you just, if you guys can just imagine, it seriously it was in the middle of nowhere, a village. They had an airstrip. That's how you got there, by plane. There was no driving there. Um, so we flew there a week before my mom was to deliver. And anyway, the pilot of the little plane that flew, he had a house, and his wife, I think, could sense my mom and her um, maybe fear of the hospital, and so she offered her home. So my mom had my little brother Jonathan in this home in the middle of nowhere in a village in Africa. And I think what strength it had to have taken. Not that she really had a choice, I guess, but still, <laughs> she did it. No medicine, nothing. She had this, this baby boy. So I remember my mom. We don't forget their stories or our stories because they encourage us and they give us strength to persevere. We don't forget the power of the pack. Ladies, maybe you're here today and you're trying to find your pack. Maybe you already have one. Be thankful today for them. Remember them today. Maybe even take a minute to thank them today. And if you don't have your pack or your herd, I'm here to tell you that you're gonna find one of the strongest ones here at FLC. It will take you making a step. We don't know that you need the pack if you don't take the step to make your presence known. But once you do, our ladies here are waiting with open arms. There's some of you go, ladies are some of the best ladies. And I just have to brag a little bit again, this week was a crazy week for Jeff and our family. And Colleen went into the hospital and normally when something like that happens, I'm right on that calendar and I'm trying to get meals together and things like that and I didn't do it. And I apologize, Colleen. But we were talking with Reuben yesterday, he came to help us at the house and he told me, the people were taking the meals. I hadn't even asked, but there are people here today that took Colleen and Reuben meals because they knew, had heard that she was in the hospital and she needed it. So way to go. You all know who you are. Thank you for taking the meals and taking care of them when I couldn't. <laughs> I try to do activities with the ladies at least once a month I know I have been slacking, again, because of circumstances in our life. But if you ladies, if you have not been to one of our Love Does events, if you have not been to just one of our fun nights out, if you have not been on our ladies retreat, I encourage you to get involved in this way as you're able to. I, I know it's crazy, but it, that helps. That gets you, that allows you to get to know 
who's around you. It allows us to hear from you, to get to know you. So I encourage you to do that. You can mark right on your calendars right now, ladies retreats the last weekend of October. So you can put it in now. And there's no excuse then when it starts to come up <laughs> that um, you didn't know. Because the last weekend in, in October is our ladies retreat and everyone is invited. Maybe it's because I so need relationship in my life and I pursue it that I have been blessed to find my packs around the world in places that we've lived. My Dallas girls are a new pack. And boy, do I know that they love me and I know that they pray for me and what strength that that gives me. I'm thankful for my FLC pack. You truly are a special group of ladies. I know that there have been times I have been in the middle. And many of you, many of you have surrounded me and you were ready to fight the world for me. But I want you to know that I, sorry, that I am here for you today. And if you need it, I will be the first to form that circle around you. So ladies, you know that I can't leave you today and I can't let you go without a little gift. I try to do something um, each year for my ladies and it has to do something with what I speak about. So today when you leave, there's a basket out front. I'll have maybe Marcy if you wanna go out and put it up. But I found these cute little socks with elephants on them. <laughs> So you, please, take a pair of socks with the elephants. Guys, if you want a pair, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> but when you wear them, my prayer is that you will remember this story. Remember the story about the elephants, how important it is to have women in your life who love you, who care for you, who pray for you, and who will fight for you. And then also how important you are to this pack. Ladies, find your tribe, your pack, your herd, whatever you want to call it. Surround them, surround yourself with them, and join in the course through the ages that says there is no community like a community of women. I'd like all of the ladies, if you wouldn't mind, would you just stand up for me? I just want you to take a look. You might need to turn around. Look at all the ladies represented here today. There's probably some in the balcony and it's kind of hard to see with the lights up there, but they're up there too. I see you all. Some of your faces are new. Some I've known for a very long time. I see love and I see support out there. And I see Jesus. So ladies, let's be a community of women that stand together that we are known by our love for Jesus, that we are known about our love for each other and then show that, okay? Would we, can we do that? Can we be that community of women? Let's pray together. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this great story and, and how with these elephants, God, that you, that these females, this group, they do this and, and when someone is vulnerable, when when one of their own is hurting, that they surround and they protect them and, and then celebrate them with them when they come through it, God. What a great story and illustration for us. God, I thank you for each one of these ladies standing here today. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for what they bring to the table, for their relationships that they have, that they're going to make. I thank you for each one of them. I thank you for your love. God, you love each one of these ladies, and they love you. I know it. And I just pray that here at our church, at FLC, and also in our community, that you would just make us a strong group of women. That when people see us, God, they see you, and they see our love for one another. And when we are hurting, that we will come together and surround that person who's hurting. And then, God, what a great thing it is to also be able to celebrate with them once they've come through it, God. We just thank you for your love this morning. I thank you again for each woman, woman represented here, God, and pray a special blessing on them today. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't forget to grab your socks.